wait a minute. So Biden, I just want to make sure I've got this, the facts right because they, they don't sound fair. Check out the links in the description for my favorite apparel, Bibles, books, commentaries, and more. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylan. Now, this is an absolutely crazy story with insane connections to it that the FB lie tried to keep from everybody, <laughs> believe it or not. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the third assassination plot on Trump and connect the dots in a way that they don't want you to know. They don't want you to see this because it kind of gives everything away. I'm also going to show you how the connections to commie law and Sleepy Joe will blow your mind. Hey, real quick, would you hit that thumbs up button? You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. Listen, this is a story put out by Time. It's called Iran, Trump, and the Third Assassination Plot. Asaf Merchant was arrested on July 12th. He had just loaded his luggage into his ride to the airport, commencing a journey either to his wife and children in Iran or to a different wife and children in his native Pakistan. In weeks of secretly recorded conversations with a federal informant, Merchant had confided that he had families in both countries. He also, according to an FBI affidavit, said he had come to America to arrange the assassination of a political person. Now make no mistake here, the FBI knows exactly who this political person is. They tried to keep this under wraps, first and foremost. Information came out. They're, now they're trying to make it sound as if this is just a political person. We don't know exactly who it is because they know that if you know that Trump is that political person, then it will just help Trump. But Along with other evidence, the documents all but confirm that Donald Trump was the person Merchant was authorized to offer up to $1 million to take out. In a leaked document, Merchant described remotely scouting a Trump rally, then sending a written report on event security, how many guards, how many body scanners, back to Tehran. In secretly recorded meetings described by the FBI after his arrest, Merchant games out the assassination with the informant. The plan, he details, involved a crowd, a staged demonstration intended to serve as a distraction, a target at a podium, and security all around. Does this sound familiar to you? Well, this all happened the day before the first assassination attempt on Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania. Coinky dink no. Listen to this. Alerted to the Iranian plot well before Merchant's arrest, the Secret Service increased protection of Trump, which is a lie, a complete and utter lie. They did not do that. In fact, it was just within the last few days that they've increased security for Trump, even after everything that's gone on. Context that only amplified the agency's failure when an attacker's bullet grazed the former president at a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania on July 13th. So here's the man that was sent over here to give a million dollars, have a million dollar reward to anybody that could take out a political person or Donald Trump. Listen to this. Federal authorities say that they have found no evidence that the slain attacker, Thomas Crooks, acted with the assistance of anyone else, let alone Iran. Of course, they can't find any evidence to... <laughs> evidence, right? To it because, well, they're trying to control the narrative. That's what they've been doing this entire time. You know, about the best information that we've gotten from Secret Service since all this happened in Butler, Pennsylvania, was that they they take fault for putting trust in other people that failed. That's about all they've said. In fact, you can go watch my video. They just admitted what really happened to hear what the Secret Service just came out and said, which will blow your mind. And I show a prominent Democrat, I mean, a screaming liberal that actually came out on video and essentially admitted to everything that we've suspected. Nor has any evidence, nor has any evidence emerged connecting Iran to Ryan Wesley Ralph. 
who was apprehended after the attempt and ambush on, of Trump earlier this month on a golf course in Florida, though Ralph displayed sympathetic interest in Iran. Now, it's kind of funny how they're still playing the we don't know who that political figure is. This was actually a story by CNN back in July, okay, right after the first attempt on Trump's life. It says, exclusive Secret Service ramped up security after intel of Iran plot to assassinate Trump. Nobody else. Trump. Not that there's nobody else that they would like to do that to, but this was an intentional plot on Trump. And of course, they have to say that there was no known connection to Crooks. In fact, not only is it a coinky dink that Crooks, the very next day after uh, this stuff with Merchant went down, made that attempt on Trump and Butler and actually hit Trump in the ear. Um, well, the attacker at the golf course in Florida just a week ago was pro-Iran and urged them to, well, take out Trump. In fact, I showed this in my video about Ralph, this, uh, this book that he wrote where he was talking about how he is pro-Iran. Uh, this is a part from that book. I would like to celebrate the amazing work of John Kerry that very humbly and humanely handled the Iran deal, which elated me in the whole of the world, he wrote. I must take part of the blame for the child that we elected for our next president. This, he's talking about Trump. That ended up being brainless. But I am man enough to say that I misjudged and made a terrible mistake. And I ran. I apologize. You are free to... Trump, as well as me, for that error in judgment and the dismantling of the deal. Now, it's very interesting that there seems to be these connecta dots between everybody involved in all of these things, including uh, Crooks, Ralph, the FBI, the Secret Service, and even the Kamila uh, campaign. Look at this story Iran hacked Trump campaign turned over stolen materials to Biden Harry campaign. Now, this was a major story that broke like like a week ago and hardly anybody's talked about it. It's it kind of blows my mind that not you know more people aren't talking about this. Now the lamestream media isn't going to talk about this of course. But I don't know why we're not shouting this from the rooftops. Well, because this is pure insanity. Check this out. The IRI hacked former President Donald Trump's campaign and turned over the stolen materials to the Bitey Harry campaign, federal officials said in a statement. So the ODNI, FBI, CISA said in a joint statement that Iranian hackers sent the stolen materials to then Biden Harris campaign officials in June and July. July was the month of the first attack on Trump. Information that the hacker sent to the then Bidey Harry campaign contained an excerpt taken from stolen non-public material from the former President Trump's campaign as texts in the emails. This is further proof that the Iranians are actively in in interfering in the election to help commie law, Harry, and Sleepy Joe because they know President Trump will restore his tough sanctions and stand against their reign of terror. You know, Kamila Law and Sleepy Joe, the, the entirety of the left, even a, a lot of Republicans are warmongers. They're war hungry. They continue to make their fortune when there's more destruction going on around the world. Do you see how it works yet? The longer war continues, the richer they get. So yes, it is a threat for somebody to come in and talk about wanting to end these wars, stop these wars that America shouldn't have any, any business being a part of. The FBI claimed that there was currently no information indicating the, the Sleepy Joe and Kamila Harry officials replied to the email. So they just get a, <laughs> an email from Iran. It just put in their inbox and it's just all this hacked information about Trump and, but there's no indication that they replied to it at all. But remember who are the people that get to decide if any information is released about this? You're right. 
Kamila Harry, and Sleepy Joe. It's their administration that decides whether any of the fine details about this get out. Wait a minute, so Biden, I just wanna make sure I've got this, the facts right, because they, they don't sound fair. So the Biden-Harris campaign can decide whether or not the FBI can see what was stolen, and the Biden-Harris campaign can then decide whether or not Donald Trump, <laughs> a competitor in a presidential election, wow. who the material was regarding and stolen from, can actually see what was taken. Well, so in some instances, the FBI can just wholesale, you know, demand that information be turned over and actually get it themselves. Other instances, they have to ask um, <laughs> okay. owners of the information to provide okay. it to them. Yep. We don't know exactly... Okay. Do you see how this works yet? Um, yeah, but what has been confirmed is that information has been hacked from Trump by people that are also actively trying to take Trump out, but it's all just a kawinky dink, right? This is what Trump himself had to say on the matter. Wow, just out. The FBI caught Iran spying on my campaign and giving all of the information to the Kamila Harry campaign. Therefore, she and her campaign were illegally spying on me. This is essentially mirroring how the left has been screaming. And remember, uh, Hillary and the Russia hoax, um, how she made all that stuff up about the, the, the Russia connection with Trump. Still to this day, they try to use that lie, although... It's very rare that you hear them trying to use that anymore since it's literally been completely debunked, even by the lamestream media. Listen, you don't have to be a genius to understand that there is something going on here that is deeper than what, of course, what they're trying to let on. There have been multiple attempts on Trump's life, and God forbid that there are any more, but the reality is, is that this isn't going to stop. They want us to stop talking about this. They want us to forget that all of this is happening right before our very eyes. But we can't let that happen. We must continue to speak out and stand on truth. But I want to leave you with this encouragement. This is why we can have hope. Uh, this is Paul in Romans chapter 15. Look at verse 13 here. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You know, the world likes to talk about having hope and joy and peace and all these things that they really know nothing about because hope and joy and peace do not come from the world. They come only through the author of these things, and that is God, you know, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, being given the Holy Spirit through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can be given the ability to truly have joy and peace and hope, even when things seem so bad, so backward, so upside down. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video.